Hello everyone, in this Highlink Shorts, I am going to tell you about glioblastoma, a brain tumor which is seen in adults. These are the most common primary malignancy of the brain in adults and their most common site is frontal lobe and they will carry worse prognosis. WHO in 2016, they have given their classification on the basis of IDH gene which is also known as isocitrate dehydrogenase. So there are three types of glioblastoma, wild type, mutant and not otherwise specified. Most common is the wild type, which is seen in 90% of the cases. They are also known as primary glioblastoma because they are arising from the normal brain tissue. They are not secondary to any other tumor. So that is why it is de novo. They will be seen in older patient and their most common mutation will be telomerase reverse transcriptase, which is also called as TERT. So TERT mutation is more commoner than P53 in wild type, which is the most common type. Mutant type, less common type is seen in 9% of the cases and they are also known as uh, secondary glioblastoma because they will be secondary to the diffuse anaplastic astrocytoma. Usually these patients will be younger and they will be having most common mutation of the P53. On gross examination of this tumor, you will see most common site is the frontal lobe and bilateral hemorrhagic necrosis mass will be seen because they are highly vascular tumor. So they will cross the midline and this is the appearance which is the real reason for the name of butterfly glioma. Right on CT scan. You can see this butterfly glioma is visible and on gross examination you can notice these are the hemorrhagic necrotic mass and looking like a butterfly they are crossing the midline via corpus callosum and that is why it is also called as butterfly glioma. On microscopic examination you can see there is a necrotic area eosinophilic necrotic area and this necrotic area if you look at their borders they are haphazard serpentine. So what is this these are the serpentine necrosis. These are the serpentine necrosis. What will happen? This serpentine necrosis is going to push the tumor cell. So they are pushing the tumor cell at the edges and they are now looking parallel to each other. So this parallelism of the tumor cell is because of the necrosis pushing them to the periphery. So that is why when tumor cells are arranged parallel to each other due to serpentine necrosis, such pattern is called as pseudo palisading necrosis, right? So pseudo palisading necrosis is seen in and diagnostic of the glioblastoma and you can see small blood vessels which are proliferating variable shapes and sizes so these are proliferating blood vessel because glioblastoma is highly vascular tumor right so keep learning enjoy learning